there is a widely held view, known as the classical narrative, which states that after a brilliant period for math and science when Greeks laid the foundation for modern science, there was a period of stagnation before Europeans took over where the Greeks had left off. In between the roughly 1,000 years, the classical narrative supposes that little happened except for some translations by Arabs to make Greek texts available to Europeans. Islamic scholars, however, didn't just preserve classical texts, but they analyzed, corrected, and improved upon them. Contrary to what the classical narrative represents, mathematics and science thrived for centuries in the medieval Islamic world. In fact, many of the ideas which were previously thought to have been brilliant new conceptions due to European mathematicians of the 16th and 18th centuries are now known to have been developed by Islamic mathematicians four centuries earlier. Let's look at some examples of how medieval Islamic scholars contributed to math and science. First, the decimal point. For decades, researchers have assumed that the decimal point and decimal fractions were invented by the 16th century Flemish mathematician Simon Steven. While Steven did write about decimals, he did not invent the decimal number system nor the decimal fractions. In fact, the decimal number system had been invented and put into place centuries earlier by Islamic mathematicians al uklidisi and al-Kashi. According to the best available evidence, the first recorded use of decimal fractions is found in the Book of Chapters on Hindu Arithmetic, written in Damascus in the year 952-953 to AD by Abu Hassan al-Uklisi. Centuries later, in 1427, another Islamic scholar, al-Kashi, wrote the Mifta al-Hisab, or Key to Arithmetic, where decimal fractions received both a name and a systemization. Thus, the decimal point and decimal fractions have been put into practice and improved upon not in Europe during the 16th century, but in the 10th century Islamic world. The Scientific Method Ibn al-Haytham was one of the medieval Islamic scholars who made fundamental contributions to science. Through his discoveries in optics and light, his series of repeatable experiments in order to prove a hypothesis led to the creation of the scientific method. Previous scholars had relied on hypotheses based on observations, but lacked repeatable experiments to prove these hypotheses. It was Al-Haytham who, through his experiments, discovered how light rays reflect off objects into our eyes, and who, in the process of his experimentation with light, invented the camera obscura, the medieval precursor to the modern camera. Despite the importance of Al-Haytham's foundational role in creating the scientific method, his groundbreaking discoveries in optics and his significant contributions in mathematics, he is often excluded from discussions around the history of science and mathematics. Credit for pioneering the scientific method is often given to later European scholars such as Roger Bacon, Newton, and Galileo. The Field of Algebra one of the most foundational branches of mathematics, algebra, was introduced as a mathematical discipline by a medieval Islamic scholar during the 9th century named Al-Khawarizmi. In his text, Al-Khawarizmi synthesized Greek geometric and Indian numerical approaches to mathematics to create algebra. It was Al-Khawarizmi who introduced the idea of transforming equations by restoration and balancing algebra and al muqabala In fact, the term algebra is a transliteration of the Arabic algebra. Islamic scholars not only created algebra as an independent discipline, but they also contributed much to its development. In the years following the publication of Al-Khawarizmi's text, numerous contributions by Islamic scholars further systematized the mathematical discipline. In addition to spreading misinformation about the origin of these contributions, the classical narrative also downplays the importance of the medieval Islamic world. For one, the classical narrative often pits religion and scientific inquiry against each other, with religion supposedly suppressing scientific discovery. In reality, however, religion and the pursuit of knowledge had a close and mutually beneficial relationship in the medieval Islamic society. Religion presented new scientific challenges with which previous civilizations had not faced, 
such as the calculation of prayer times and the keep blood problem. To solve these problems, Islamic scholars invented new forms of mathematics. In addition, the Quran encourages scientific study as a religious pursuit, and many medieval Islamic scholars were also renowned religious leaders. Thus, the Golden Age of Islam is a prime example of how religion and science were brought together to create new innovations which not only benefited contemporary medieval Islamic society, but would change the world forever. In addition, the classical narrative often isolates the works of medieval Islamic scholars as being either simply copies of classical texts or having no influence on later scientific and mathematic discoveries. In reality, however, the works of medieval Islamic scholars were not lost to European Renaissance mathematicians. In fact, many of these European mathematicians copied from and built upon Islamic texts. Upon closely studying the writings of the 16th century astronomer Copernicus, researchers discovered that much of his work is identical to the works of medieval Islamic scholars who lived a few centuries before. The most obvious evidence of Copernicus's use of medieval Islamic mathematical texts is his near-perfect copy of a statement of a mathematical theorem, along with its proof invented during the 13th century by Al-Tusi, called the Tusi couple. In addition, Copernicus used Urdi's lemma in his creation of his model for upper planets. Urdi's lemma had been invented by the 13th century astronomer and mathematician Al-Urdi, and had been used by the 14th century Syrian astronomer Ibn al-Shatir to unify all planetary models into one geocentric format. Some of al-Shatir's models were directly used by Copernicus. Thus, while Copernicus's influence on astronomy was invaluable, he would not have been able to come up with his models without the previous works of medieval Islamic scholars, most notably al-Tusi, al-Urdi, and al-Shatir. Many of these scholars lived after the 12th century, when the classical narrative assumes that Islamic science was in decline. For some scientific disciplines like astronomy, the Golden Age was after the 12th century. The Miftah al-Hisab, the crowning achievement of Islamic math, was written during the 15th century. The classical narrative presents a distorted and Eurocentric view of history. In this version of history, Medieval Islamic society had little to no contributions to mathematics and science. In reality, however, many of the most fundamental notions in scientific and mathematical inquiry, such as the scientific method and the field of algebra, were invented by medieval Islamic scholars.